Testament. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. What a blessing that the Lord and His providence chose this day, this feast, the first of May, the feast of St. Joseph the Worker, so that we as a family could gather again. And the providence of God that we participate because of His mercy in a Marian work that is to say, conceived in the Immaculate Womb of our Blessed Mother, through the fiat of our Mother Foundress. And every work of Our Lady is always under the care and the protection of St. Joseph. In this moment, which is so difficult and hard and throughout the world in so many countries and in all of our families, perhaps the Lord wants to remind us that we also are under the protection, the gaze of St. Joseph. And contemplating this day, this moment in our history as a spiritual family, perhaps we could contemplate with the heart of St. Joseph as we, the, the masculine, branch, masculine branch of the religious, contemplate the, the heart of St. Joseph. And together we can consecrate, con contemplate him as the first apostle of the hearts of Jesus and Mary and how he made choices of love in silence and humility, abnegation, sacrifice, and fortitude, supernatural fortitude, that he made an oblation of his whole life in service of the mother and the child, and also a triumph of his love. Because, brothers and sisters, every choice made with love, every choice made in obedience to the word of God is a triumph of God in history. And the Lord doesn't have another way to act or enter into history except through our small yeses, our fiats to Him. And so we are praising the Lord for the gift of the life, the mission, the person, and the fiat, the perpetual fiat of St. Joseph. Perhaps we could also contemplate three dimensions of His work, which is His life. His holiness is the most important important work in life. And as St. John Paul II wrote in his letter to artists that the most important art the most important art in life is the art of loving and of holiness. That is to say that our lives may be works of holiness to God. And and St. Joseph has given God a masterpiece in the art of holiness. How? Through simple gestures. And perhaps we can contemplate three kinds of gestures that, that St. Joseph did. The first gesture, contemplating the sacred scriptures, is his obedience. A man who has made with his life in the difficulties and the moments of blessing and moments of battle and spiritual battle, he always gave a response in obedience to the word of God. Even until the Virgin Mary and the child Jesus could place their trust that the that St. Joseph would choose when we, they would leave from Egypt to, to 
from Nazareth to Bethlehem and Bethlehem to Egypt. And as St. John Paul II said, the man gives the, who is chosen by God, received the divine election because he had the listening and obedience to his word. And through that obedience and fortitude, he could make of his life a work of holiness. A second gesture of St. Joseph. We contemplate that three times in the gospel that he got up and he took the mother and the child. That means his heart was the home as our mother always teaches us. It was the first place and perhaps the only safe place for the mother and the child in this world. And he wanted to make of his whole life that home of love, silence, and service, an oblation and love of the hearts of Jesus and Mary. He couldn't do much in Nazareth or Bethlehem, and we don't know much what happens in Egypt, but we know that Our Lady always had St. Joseph as her home. We can have the trust that that heart might, must be the most beautiful and safe home in the whole world for them. Why? Because there was, it was a home of love and responsibility to the mission that God had entrusted to him. The gesture of receiving the mother and the child in his heart. Today we contemplate the third gesture of St. Joseph, which was his work. And we don't know much about his work through the gospel, but only that, carpen, or only that title that comes through the gospel of St. Matthew and also in the gospel of St. John that Joseph was a carpenter, a man who worked with his hands. And what kind of work did St. Joseph do to the details in, when Jesus is speaking about the bread of life in the synagogue of Capernaum that some say again where did this man receive this wisdom because he is the son of Joseph the carpenter why in Capernaum there's a, an oral tradition that St. Joseph by the gift of God also had that capacity to make to make very beautiful works out of wood. And perhaps it was the synagogue in Capernaum that St. Joseph, he made all the woodwork in that such a sacred place. We remember that the centurion also, who spoke with Jesus in Luke chapter 7, when they say that, Lord, you have to heal his servant because he has made this synagogue for our people, for our town. And Jesus doesn't say anything about the synagogue. He only begins to walk to Capernaum as if saying, I know. I know who has built that synagogue also through the support of that centurion. What a man is St. Joseph, who in all of his life, his life, which is a gesture of love in all of his dimensions, an offering of love and service that we can contemplate also our identity and our mission as apostles of the pure starts of Jesus and Mary, so that in all of our life we want to be obedient to the Word of God, the designs of love of God the Father communicated through our, author our legitimate authorities in the Church, we also want to receive the mother and the child, the two hearts, and allow them to reign in our hearts, in prayer, in studies, in hard work. And may we make of our whole life and this, this work, this path, to create a new civilization of love and life, perhaps not synagogues made by our hands, but homes and families renewed by the gift and the light of the gospel. Other Nazareths, small Nazareths 
in every corner of the world as St. Joseph had built them. We conclude with these words of our mother foundress in a reflection that she gave in 2015 on May 1st. Our mother foundress told us St. Joseph was simply a carpenter, a simple man who was chosen to be the face and the heart of the Father, the Eternal Father for His only begotten Son. He worked hard, but He worked with humility. He didn't seek anything for Himself, but sought everything for Our Lady and for Our Lord. St. Joseph, the worker, the first apostle of the triumph of the heart of the pierced hearts of Jesus and Mary, pray for us. Offer the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.